All right, we should be live now. What's going on, ladies and gents? Uh, members only video for everybody today for the early slate, and it's gross. I, I know that you know in DFS, the nice part is we all play it at equal playing field. It's a gross looking slate. I know sometimes you like these, but we haven't talked it over yet. So I don't know if you like this one. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I don't think it's as, as gross as you know. I don't think it's just tough with like the first game, like uh, almost being out of play and everything like that. It's I'm glad you have an angle. It was one I didn't really have one on. With Philly and Cincy being red-orange, it's tough to look at that one. And then uh, where you're at in Cleveland, it seems like kind of a wild card, huh? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the weather seems fine over here, but again, it's downtown, 45 minutes away, so hard to really know. Um, yeah, I think we just kind of got to wait and see on the weather stuff. Good thing is all the games are kind of spread out. Yeah, the Philly Cincy one seems like a much bigger deal. And I do think there's a good opportunity that they're going to let us know soon if they have any intentions of playing this game. Because he kind of writes it up saying there's a five plus hour late start potential, which they might just call it early. You might know. Uh, in the Chicago Cleveland game where you're at, it seems like you should be able to get some innings in at least at first. So take that for what it's worth. Yeah, I will definitely be monitoring the weather, you know, as the morning goes on. It is nice that, you know, even with two weather games, it's possible to just avoid those two games. Yeah, I, it sounds like Philly since he's a much bigger risk. But if they don't call this thing, if they delay it, maybe they're okay waiting. So take yeah, that for what it's worth. I think that there's, there might be a, a big edge if they delay it in, in rostering hitters from that game. I'm with you. I, I can get on board with that because in this Philly Cincy game, you got a couple of, you know, less than stellar pitchers going at it. Although, you know. Spencer Howard had a okay appearance last time out. I th certainly don't think we would mind picking on him a little bit. No, and actually, I hadn't checked weather before I looked at the slate, so now I know why you think it is so ugly. I have no arguments. I mean, I think the games, it sounded like I thought the games were better than you did, but now I hear the weather, I get it. Yeah, and a four-game slate when one of them might be booted, it's just, it's it's more diff. I don't know, because then the ownership condenses so badly, yeah, too. One's booted and one might be booted, so I'm with you, like... Uh, I mean, definitely going to have to try to, you know, try to mostly work with those last two games, I think. Right. And if for me, I guess if these games are out of play, that I'm looking at playing like Bumgarner and Peterson or Alzale, like I don't love any of these options, nor really should you. What were you kind of thinking for pitching? Because I'm assuming Lance Lynn is a guy that you're probably at least looking at. Yeah, definitely looking at Lynn. Um, I will say, though, both pitchers in the uh, – so I was looking at both pitchers a little bit in the Cleveland game. Makia at 4K, even though he's probably just going to be an opener. He's got good stuff, and then Lynn, I think, is the best arm on the slate. If we take those pitchers away, I think I actually – man, I, it, you can make a case for all four of these guys. I think Alzelay would be like the lock, especially with Tatis out. I can't go Bumgarner. He looks so bad to me when I watched him last time out. I just can't do it. And then it comes down to either Peterson or Lamette. Uh, and I think you can make strong cases for either of those guys, you know, basically just because it's them or nothing else. So uh, it's it's fun to break down if nothing else. Lamette cut up to 64 pitches last time out. So I guess if you're just kind of looking at the way he's trending, like I don't think 75 is out of the question today, which – isn't a lot, but given the slate, like, what are your options, right? Yeah, agreed. So, um, yeah, I think Alzale, and that's scary as hell, would be the guy I just plug in. And then either Peterson or Lamette. Who do you prefer between Peterson and Lamette? Probably Peterson. Not with a lot of gumption. And I like Alzale. It's, I, I don't like throwing guys against San Diego because they take so many pitches, and I get a little nervous about his pitch count, but... Given the options, I'm an Alzale fan. We've been talking about this guy all year long. He's got good stuff. He definitely has good stuff. Uh, yeah, this slate's ugly as hell now, for sure. I mean, let's just give the Alzale credit for this. He's got double digits and now eight straight starts, which, you know, he's not, like, ruining slates with 30s and 40s, but there's something to be said for consistency, at least getting you double digits. If you told me he got 12 today, I'd actually be just fine with that, even at that Same. price. Same. Same. I, like I said, the only guy I really cannot use personally is Bumgarner. Like, the eye test just, man, I watched a bunch of his last start last time out against St. Louis, and 
even his outs were like, man, they looked like all cookies right down the middle. Did he even get any outs? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I get that. I mean, he did have some nice games just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, he did. I mean, I wasn't on him for those either. So, like, it's not like I have that, you know, in the back of my head. But you're not wrong. I mean, he's got that stretch of games is the best of anyone on this slate. It's true. Um, I mean, I can understand why you watch somebody and you'd see how bad they look. If I thought he was still anywhere close to that dude, I would love him in a bounce back spot. But I only really like that for really good pitchers. And I just don't think of Madison Bumgarner as a really good pitcher anymore. No, me neither. Um, It's obviously not the worst spot in the world against the Mets. Although I will say, like, with Alonzo back and Lindor, it isn't, like, tearing the cover off the ball. But, you know, he's got multi-hits and I think three straight. Like, he looks decent right now. So their lineup is looking a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, the other thing here would be you should be able to probably get five innings out of Landslin. And if that's the case, that's enough for me. Does it worry you he's on three days rest? Yeah. Me too, because I got worried about that with Bassett, you know, having a long, you know, he threw a ton of pitches last time out and he could not locate yesterday. Not that it's like the same here, but kind of similar. I worry when these guys like you talk about a lot are out of their normal routine. Yeah, I don't like that. And his pitch count should be down today, too, although we were really play, thinking he was going to pitch a handful of innings maybe because of the rain anyway. But that does give you some cause for pause. It depends how people evaluate this slate, too. Yes. Right? I'm assuming Lance Lynn will be overwhelming chalk because the rest of his names on this list suck. However, if the weather gets really bad, then people will abandon him and making it out a little bit more desirable. So, I'm so with you. This is definitely a slate I want to, like, zag when everyone else zigs because there is no, like, you know – all these spots are similar. All the pitchers, all the offensive spots. You know what I mean? So, like, whoever is going to be low, and there will be, a you know, one pitcher, two pitchers, and an offense that are lower owned. Like, that's who I'll be looking at. And so I actually tweeted this out last night. And I just wanted to kind of, like, review what I was saying to people. And we talk about being contrarian in baseball all the time. And it's the difference in how people score. So, if like, you look at my lineup from last night. I got three dudes balling at 25, 30, and 35 points. And then... Five other guys that combined for one third of the total of Shoop score. So, like, this is why baseball is so wildly unpredictable. And we talk about fading chalk. You see Donaldson right there at 31%, total bust. Shoop or Scope at 5%, you know, huge. It's why we always just talk about being different in baseball because it's just not reliable at all. Yeah. And there are like almost like every hitter uh, in a certain lineup is in the same spot. You know, they're all going to get a certain amount of bats against the same pitcher. Like, in the NBA, it's not like that. In the NFL, it's not like that. But certainly the NBA, like, there's defined roles and usage, et cetera. It's just completely different. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I guess gun to head right now, I'd probably go Alzale Peterson. And not like it at all. Sam, the other thing that, that I do like about, and again, it just means nothing, but I always prefer, and on a, especially on a slate like this, like pairing my pitchers. So the fact that I already like Alzale makes me like Lamet a little bit more, even though it probably shouldn't. So I would probably go Alzale Lamet. You know, I'm not really a Lamet guy that much, but no. we don't have great options today. This is reopening. They're calling it the Reds play the Phillies at 135 Bowl. Once it can be back, it's a your chance to party like it's opening day. Just an FYI, I know they will let this game in somehow or try like hell because it's reopening day. Okay, so that's kind of a note. Take you know what you want out of it, that there's a reason they might want to get this Philly-Cincy game in. And you already kind of mentioned that, you know, waiting on the bats could be an interesting play. What did, they, what did that even mean, that, that message? Could it's be- like they're back to full capacity day. It's like the reopening day and stuff like that. So, oh. again... Who knows, right? But just, well, I think we're again, if everybody stays off this game, you could maybe get like Cincy bats at the end of the day with no ownership. Yeah, agreed. I actually think we're going to either know, like, they're going to postpone it early. So, because even if it's full capacity day, if the weather's shit, they're not going to play it. You know what I mean? Because then no one's going to want to go to the game. However, if they do think, you know, they can wait 
four or five hours, I think you might see some sort of announcement on that. Sure. And it, it's, it's still not even a, a total night game at that point, right? Like this game is supposed yeah. to start at 1135 Central. So it's, it's a later game. Okay. Pretending that we can't go to Philly Cincy. I like the idea of the edge right there. If you can wait it out at lower ownership, probably due to weather. Uh, but that being said, I mean, I think, you know, you can look at the Sox bats. Um, yeah. Why don't you tell us about our Cleveland starters today, Quantrill and Mejia? I don't know if Quantrill's going to pitch. I feel like this is wrong. He just pitched. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, he only threw 60 pitches, but he pitched two days ago. Okay. Just so it just seems like a straight bullpen game more than anything, right? Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what the Indians' plans are here. Uh, this Mejia has a decent arm every time I've seen him. I don't love bullpen games, but the Indians' bullpen isn't that good. So, yeah. You want to get on board with, with the White Sox stack? I can certainly dig it. Now, the flip side of that is, once again, we're worrying about weather. And I don't want to play bats and only get five innings if I can help it. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, they seem like they're in a solid spot. Billy Hamilton has been hot lately. So if you're looking for a guy that is cheap and has been kind of rolling, we know he's not a great hitter, but he's been hitting all right lately. And he's got all that upside with his speed. Yeah, exactly. So especially if you're stacking the White Sox. Um. If this game continues to play out, I don't like love J Ram here. Oh, he's day to day as well. With dehydration. Okay, I think there's a good chance he's in the lineup today. Same. Uh, if people think this game plays out because everybody's going to use Lance Lynn, that should keep Ramirez's ownership down a little bit today. Agreed. Like Ramirez, I don't mind even a mini stack because it's such a small slate. Lynn on three days rest, he's not unhittable like Ramirez and Rosario. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, like, selling my soul for it, but I don't hate it. No, and J-Ram's got a couple career bombs off Lynn, so maybe he walks into the day feeling good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this lineup's all sorts of bad, but those, you know, J-Ram's still really good. All right, so if you're looking at Al Zalea then you're probably going to want to focus your offense more on the New York versus Arizona game. And that's how it has to be, right? That's the problem when you have these two games. That's what I hate. It's like your pitchers decide who your offense is or vice versa. It's definitely a day, especially with the way these first two games play out. It's okay to play a bat or two against your Oh, pitchers. yeah. I was going to say that. Like, for sure. If you are using Baumgartner or Peterson or Lamette, like, you can use one or two bats against them for sure. I don't expect any of these pitchers to score really well. And, I mean, whoever strikes out the most, even if they give up, like, four or five runs, is going to be the highest scoring pitcher in my mind. Yeah, and you already mentioned Tatis left last night, so there's a really good chance he's not in the lineup today, which means that from a Philly or a San Diego perspective, you'll probably get like a Kim for 2,800, like playing him against Alzale. This uh, wisdom guy, it might be wise to play him. He's been tearing the cover off the ball the last couple of days. Yeah, even though I'm using Lamette, I mean, I understand using some Cubs too, especially like you said, you're probably going to use Peterson. So, And you're but, probably going to get four to five innings of bullpen that they can score on. Like, Lamette can be good. Like, this is a day where Lamette could be a top-two scorer and the Cubs stack wins it all. Yes, agreed. Because if Lamette goes five innings and strikes out ten and they pull him because of his pitch count, like, you're and you have the Cubs stack, and, yeah, agreed. Um, and, like, the Cubs also look cheap. Baez, real cheap. Well, Rizzo's not. I, I was only really talking about Baez. Yeah, Baez is very affordable. You got uh, Jock. Cap is very affordable. And the other thing is, like, the Cubs and Padres' offenses are actually pretty good. Agreed. You know, Definitely the, helps matters. Right? The Mets and Arizona offenses aren't great. Now, they could be good today, but they're not great offenses. So, uh, I could definitely see why you could go with any situation right here. Is there anybody – so, are, are the Mets going to be your team then if you don't like Bumgarner? I think both sides of this game will be my teams. Uh, I always kind of have a soft spot for Arizona during the day. Um, both these teams are affordable and yeah, I'll probably just stack them up. I mean, unless we, even if we, I don't know, I might just avoid Philly Cincy. There's definitely leverage there. And I think that there's, you know, if that game plays, it's going to be way lower owned than it probably should be. However, I could, I would kind of think about bats in this game anyway. So it makes my life a little bit easier. Small, small sample sizes, but a bunch of the Mets have seen Madison Bumgarner pretty well again. Tiny sample sizes, so I don't read a lot into it. But Peraza, VR, Alonzo, these guys have all taken him deep before. Uh, got solid numbers off of him, so yeah, you know, something. 
you know, pitchers can look bad one start, great the next, and, you know, be on and off, et cetera, et cetera. But if Bumgarner is his stuff like he did last time out, he will get rocked today. I'm very confident. Yeah, Peraza's dirt cheap, 3,200. Not a lot's going to excite you on this slate, but he's very affordable. We got VR, who, you know, again, not a great player, but hits for power a little bit, can steal some bases. He's always a high upside guy. Most definitely. He got caught stealing, I think, two games in a row. Uh, like I mentioned, Lindor is actually seeing the ball decent right now. And then, like, the other side, Nick Ahmed, um, you guys for lefty. Yeah. And I'm kind of excited about this slate now. This is like, because I was thinking about that I liked offense from this game anyways. And now, yeah, I mean, I don't love Lance Lynn. So I think I might just roll Alzale, Met, and stack up this last game and avoid both those weather spots. And unfortunately, if those games get postponed, then a lot of people will probably do that. But maybe not. Most people will probably avoid the first one. And then the second one, I still think what happens and what we get tweeted out over the next two hours will have a big deal if people try to use anything from that game or not. And I think the, the Lance Lynn ownership, because I don't think everybody's going to notice he's on three days rest. And certainly, um, what was I going to say? The, the weather will dictate how aggressive people are on the, on the White Sox offense. So. Uh, I would. I usually avoid the weather situations if I can help it. It's harder in a four-game situation, but I mean, it just seems it, nothing hurts more than your guys not even being able to play. It definitely is a lot harder on a four-gamer. It makes the, you know, what you talked about potentially playing those Cincy bats a lot more in play, willing to take that risk because on a main slate, like when you have these weather games, like and you take the risk, even if it plays, like there's no guarantee on this one, like. If that game plays, I think there's a good chance that the high, that's the highest scoring game. Yeah, I mean, Winker and Castellanos are having great seasons, both averaging over 10 DK points a game. Naquin had a nice night last night. These guys are so cheap, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, they get a Farmer at 2,100, 4,200 uh, for Suarez. Um, I mean, their lineup isn't great outside of those top couple guys, but they're all really, really affordable. And from yeah. the Philly guys... Yeah. Yeah, all this whole game. And you, Naquin had a really good game last night. Herrera had a monster game. I mean, Philly went off last night. Yeah, dude, a lot of teams went off last night. Yeah, they did. That was that hurt me because I didn't really get my pitching right. But, yes, yes, they did. Yeah. Um, Luna, all the way off. What did he end up with total? 45. Yeah, so that's pretty well going off. <laughs> And then it's like, yeah, I only doubled my money in MLB last night, which is kind of disappointing because, you know, you call out Jonathan Scope and he doubled dogs and everything like that. But, yeah, didn't get enough right outside of that, as you guys saw by my lineup, to do any kind of real damage. It always hurts when you have that. Yeah. yeah excuse me. Definitely a night where I thought it was going to be better for me as well. Uh, I mean, I had a lineup with Colton Wong. I had Tyro Taylor, Scope, Haas. I had Scope and Haas together. <sighs> That game was, it was like home run derby watching the Brewers last night. Um, all right, guys, uh, as you can tell, the top thing we can say about the slate, watch the weather. We're not confident in it. Uh, sounds like you're looking at the pitchers from San Diego, Chicago, and offense in the Mets versus Arizona. I don't think that's a crazy build. Um, we don't have a lot of options in this one. So uh, good luck, I guess, is the best way we can say it. Yeah, that's all it is. Thanks, guys. All right, later.